as ubiquitous as secure digital or SD cards are these days, it wasn't too long ago that they weren't king of the hill. If you bought a digital camera back in the late 1990s or early 2000s, because you're old like me, you probably remember the confusing selection of memory cards that you had to choose from. Compact flash, smart media, memory stick. So how is it then that SD ended up winning the format war? Well, although SD was originally pushed by several different companies as a removable storage format that supported DRM for music, hence the name Secure Digital, everyone kind of forgot about that functionality soon after the cards hit the market and instead took note of their much more convenient size compared to compact flash and their greater storage potential compared to smart media. SD also had the advantage of being a more open standard than memory stick, which today is almost exclusively found on Sony devices or the XD picture card, meaning that it became relatively cheap for companies to start including on their digital cameras, computers, and more portable things like GPS devices. Even though you could expect to pay about $200 for a 128 megabyte SD card when they first came out in 2001, prices quickly fell as the format was introduced into more and more gadgets. So by the mid-2000s, SD had clearly started to dominate the market, but the unyielding demand for smaller, higher capacity storage meant that the technology was still being pushed forward. 2003 brought us the mini SD card, followed by the much more widely adopted micro SD card in 2005. So thanks to decreases in the size of flash transistors that actually store the data and an increase in how many can be crammed onto one card, we actually now have SD cards in capacities that were unthinkable less than two decades ago, with both standard sized and micro SD cards now available that can hold over half a terabyte, meaning that the highest capacity micro SD card on the market right now can hold over 35 thousand times as much data as a standard three and a half inch floppy while being over 50 times smaller physically. Unfortunately though, these much higher capacities mean that not all SD cards will function properly in any slot that will physically fit them. The original SD spec only supported up to 2 gigabytes, while SDHC cards can hold up to 32 gigs, and the newer SDXC can handle up to 2 terabytes, although cards that spacious aren't on the market yet. Unlike standards like USB or SATA, SD cards aren't backwards compatible with older readers that only support an older spec. So SDXC cards won't work in that card reader from 2007. This matter made worse by the fact that it requires XFAT, a newer file system that some older versions of Windows don't support natively. Newer readers, though, are usually fine with older cards. So aside from standard SD versus the higher capacity versions, you also need to pay attention though to the speed rating. Lower end models might have a number, two, four, six, inside a circle giving you an idea of the maximum write speed in megabytes per second, while higher end cards are often classified as UHS-1 or UHS-2, indicating both higher bus speeds and write speeds, with UHS-2 cards offering write speeds of at least 30 megabytes per second, which is important if you're trying to do something demanding like record 4K video, as the card needs to be able to support the high data rates to keep up. So while there's still a lot to look for when shopping for flash memory, at least the days when there were six or seven different completely different physical formats vying for your attention are over. Just try not to drop your micro SD card between your uh, couch cushions, if you know what I mean. Was that a getting something stuck in your butt joke? What? Speaking of which, Dollar Shave Club lets you get razors and other bathroom supplies shipped directly to your door for just a few bucks a month. They've got their high quality, simple, no vibrating handles, nothing like that, just high quality razor blades, high quality razors, their Dr. Carver Shave Butter, their One Wipe Charlie's Peppermint Scented Butt Wipes for Men, their Post Shave Moisturizer, and they've even got travel sizes, which let me tell you, based on my trip to Asia, is a pretty 
good idea for the one wipe Charlies, if nothing else. They've got, <laughs> seriously, you guys. <laughs> Dollar Shave Club is available at dollarshaveclub.com slash Linus, which is linked in the video description. And it's available in the US, Canada, and Australia. It just is more convenient and cheaper than going out to buy your razors at the store. So why not give it a shot? Thanks for watching, guys. If you liked this video, hit that like button. But if you disliked the video, hit dislike. Tell us why you didn't like it in the comments. Tweet me, post something on our forum. You guys are really good at finding ways to tell us when you don't like something. Also leave comments under the video with suggestions for future Fast As Possibles. And don't forget to subscribe and follow. And if you're done doing that, then check out our other channels as well. We've got some great videos over on Channel Super Fun lately that are definitely worth watching.